So the our subject matter tonight will be discussed by another great scholar, uh, Kamal Hassan. Uh, last week, we had a very lively discussion. Uh, Prof. Kamal uh, exposed all the main ideas, uh, the life of Uya Hamka and other issues. Other issues. Uh, one of the important issues in the discussion being raised was uh, the Buya style of writing. Uh, people uh, argued that uh, Buya to, uh, did not follow the, the conventional uh, academic style, but Alhamdulillah, Prof has explained, and also uh, another edition by Prof Khalidin was uh, Buya Hamka has the style of writing. So tonight is our second uh, lecture uh, of seven series. Uh, our dear friend, Prof. Aslam, has another comment. So uh, I will uh, simply address the session, invite Prof, and then read the question. I think that's all my job. So in terms of uh, question, uh, in terms of uh, same like last time, we will read from the chat box. Uh, we would uh, please uh, make the question short and sweet so that we don't have much. <laughs> we don't have to, we don't spend much time reading it. Allah. Okay, Prof. Uh, okay. Without further ado, we invite you uh, to continue. Okay. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And uh, very good evening to all of you, uh, all the uh, viewers and participants. Uh, in Malaysia, Indonesia, and also maybe from, uh, from Middle East or Africa, or uh, the other day we had someone from Turkey. Alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati amalina man yahdihi allahu fala mudilla lah wa man yudlil fala hadiya lah والصلاه والسلام على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم ولا حول ولا قوه الا بالله العلي العظيم oh allah you are the uh, most exalted uh, we do not have any knowledge except that which you have taught us indeed you are the all knowing the all wise and that there is no power or strength except with Allah, and you are the Almighty, uh, the, uh, the Exalted, and the Almighty. Um, my dear uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Brother Shahran and uh, Professor, uh, Professor Fauzan, and um, my good uh, brother and uh, colleague, uh, Dr. Muhammad Normanuti, uh, brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it is uh, by His grace and by His mercy that I'm able to, um, to, um, to, be, to be here tonight and to continue this series on the Buya Hamka and tonight is the second lecture. Um, now, what I, I plan to do for tonight is uh, I want to share with you. Uh, I'm still focusing on the uh, on the life of uh, uh, Buya Hamka uh, for for today, and maybe then uh, in the next uh, lecture I will be focusing on the on the sources of uh, uh, Hamka's uh, spirituality uh, uh, and looking at the contents of his book uh, The South Modern. That will be the third lecture. And the fourth lecture, I will be uh, discussing the contents of another book, uh, Falsafa Hido, uh, The Philosophy of Life. And in the fifth lecture, I'll be discussing the contents of another book, Pandangan Hido uh, Muslim. And then on the sixth, uh, sixth, uh, in the sixth lecture, I'll be discussing some uh, topics or themes of uh, Tafsir Al-Azhar. And in this final lecture, I will continue uh, to talk about Tafsir al-Azhar and then conclude, inshallah. Okay, so for tonight, I want to share with you first um, what, um, uh, what someone that I know, uh, Dr. Taufik Ismail, 
uh, wrote in the uh, as a forward to the biography written by uh, Irfan Hamka, uh, one of the sons of uh, Buya Hamka, is called uh, Aya. Uh, okay, and uh, in the forward uh, to this um, uh, biography, uh, a good friend of ours, uh, Dr. Taufik Ismail. Uh, the great poet of uh, Indonesia has a forward. And I want to share with you what uh, he has to say uh, about uh, Buya Hamka. Uh, now, uh, Taufik um, remembers uh, Buya Hamka very well because he used to go to uh, the office of um, Panji Masyarakat. He used to contribute uh, writings to Panji Masyarakat and other things. And, uh, and it so happened that his father uh, was a good friend of Buya Hamka. Uh, they were contemporaries uh, in school. Pak uh, Gafar, Pak uh, Gafar, uh, Ismail, I think. And um, so um, Dr. Taufik wrote in this uh, forward uh, in about four, four, four pages. Uh, I'll try to um, summarize what he has written. Uh, he said that uh, the, uh, the period of 1959 and 1965, uh, this was a period called uh, democracy terpimpin in Indonesia or guided democracy when uh, Sukarno assumed, uh, in fact, uh, dictatorial powers uh, after the uh, the three uh, major political groups uh, could not uh, really uh, agree with one another. That is uh, the communist uh, party and then the, uh, the um, secular nationalists uh, plus also the Christian groups and the Islamic group led by Mashumi. Uh, they could not agree and, uh, and, and in the elections in 1955, uh, those three parties also uh, were not able to capture the majority. And so uh, Sukarno disbanded all the uh, parties, banned them and uh, established what he called uh, guided democracy. And um, uh, Taufik uh, says that um, this period that is 59 to 65 uh, represented uh, um, a, 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 a very chaotic period, tempo yang sangat kacau dalam sejarah Indonesia, in the history of Indonesia, because uh, Sukarno uh, abolished the, uh, the provisional uh, uh, parliament uh, and uh, also uh, banned uh, Mashumi and banned uh, Partai uh, Socialist and so on. And, um, uh, newspapers which were uh, representing the Muslims and also the others were also banned. And uh, the, the economy was also uh, in a very bad shape. But uh, this was, uh, according to Taufik, was a good opportunity for the Communist Party to become stronger and stronger. So uh, the Communist Party, uh, Partai Communist Indonesia, PKI, uh, based on the, um, on the uh, ideology of uh, Marxism, Leninism, uh, Maoism, uh, began to, uh, to control uh, many aspects of, uh, of, the, uh, of the new uh, Indonesian nation. And um, um, one, of the, uh, one of the areas that the, or one of the channels of uh, of, um, of freedom of expression in Indonesia was the uh, um, uh, literature and also writing of novels and uh, short stories and, and poetry. Uh, and uh, the Co Communist Party uh, was able to influence uh, these uh, cultural channels uh, to serve uh, their uh, ideological purposes under the uh, under the direction of Lekra, Lembaga Kebudayaan Rakyat. Uh, now, uh, then he said that um, 
Now, one of the targets, one of the targets of uh, the pro-communist uh, party uh, people uh, was uh, uh, Buya Hamka. Uh, Buya Hamka was one of the one of the political targets because they saw in Buya Hamka uh, his uh, his uh, potential as a great um, orator. Uh, great debater for Islam and great uh, worker for Islam, and the uh, and and with um, also um, Pat Nasser, uh, the Apartheid communist people uh, were, uh, were were really trying to to control uh, these people from uh, from having an impact in society, and so. Uh, Buya's, uh, you know, Buya Hamka, I mentioned earlier, he was also a novelist. He came up with about 13 uh, novels and uh, short stories. Uh, of course, the most famous would be Tenggelamnya Kapal Tandarvik, Di Bawah Lindungan Kaaba, and the, worst, the first one was Si Sabaria, and then uh, Tuan Director, uh, and, um, and several others, including uh, Travelogs. Now, um, they banned uh, uh, his books, uh, and um, although they also accuse him of uh, of, uh, of plagiarism, and uh, one of those people who uh, who was actually leading this kind of anti-Islamic uh, ac <laughs> movements and activity oh, no. was uh, Pramodia uh, Anantatur, uh, you know, a, a, another great um, Indonesian uh, novelist. Uh, who died in 2006. And um, he said that uh, um, uh, Pramudia, Pramudia uh, condemned uh, Buya Hamka uh, in, 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 uh, in a very, very bad way. Uh, and uh, in ways that are really uh, uncivilized according to Pat Taufik uh, Ismail. But, uh, um, and then, uh, then uh, Taufik mentioned that uh, in 1962, uh, uh, um, sorry, uh, 64, yeah, 64, uh, Buya Hamka was arrested and detained together with several uh, Mashumi leaders, including uh, Pat Nasser. Um, and um, of course, um, the, uh, the 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 uh, the reasons given by the um, the regime uh, was spurious and baseless. They accused uh, Buya Hamka of actually trying to topple Sukarno and also working with Malaysia uh, at that time against Indonesia. Um, so he was uh, detained for two years and. Uh, and four months, uh, and then um, uh, he said that um, he was about to be really tortured in a bad way because he, he was in fact interrogated in a very harsh way for the first few days. Uh, and he was not able to sleep and all that. But then when they failed to make him confess because they wanted him to confess that he was actually uh, going to topple uh, Sukarno, that he was planning to kill uh, the the um, uh, the minister of, of religious affairs, and that he was having relations with Malaysia. Uh, he, they wanted him to confess, but he did not confess, and um, uh, and they left him alone. But they were about to start another uh, kind of torture on 1965 when uh, the uh, the coup d'état by uh, Lieutenant General Suharto uh, came and <clears throat> and uh, that uh, led to the uh, to the freedom of uh, Buya Hamka and the other Mashumi leaders. Now, um, uh, then the, um, Taufik mentions that Buya Hamka used to uh, uh, used to be invited to give uh, lectures at Taman Ismail Marzuki in, uh, in Jakarta in uh, 1969. And uh, he was asked about two things. 
in, in that in that after the lecture. First, uh, they asked him about uh, what what uh, what was his attitude towards the uh, banning of of the books of Pramodya Anantatur, and and uh, and the second, um, uh, they uh, uh, they wanted to know why Pramodya uh, went to such an extent to uh, to to um, uh, you know to condemn uh, Buya Hamka for for his writings. Uh, then uh, now Buya could have said that he would agree with the banning of, of, of uh, Pramodya's books because Pramodya was very much against uh, Buya Hamka. But Buya, Buya said uh, um, he did not agree with the, uh, with the government's policy of, of banning the books of uh, Pramodya uh, because, now this is, a, this is very important, because Falsafa Hidupnya Falsafa Hidup Beliau, the philosophy of Buya, the philosophy of life of Buya adalah cinta. Yeah? The philosophy of life of Buya was love. Now, this is very, very important uh, for us uh, uh, to understand and uh, keep in mind because this also uh, reflects the character and the personality of uh, Buya Hamka. That is a, a, a person who does not have grudges against his worst enemies, and um, um, let alone to take revenge against them. Uh, and this kind of uh, personality or character uh, reflects a very strong uh, spiritual discipline within uh, the heart of, of uh, the person. Uh, so we will need to understand where the spiritual uh, strength of Buya Hamka uh, came from uh, in our future lectures, insha'Allah. So, um, Buya says that um, what, what people should do is to uh, not to ban the book, but to, uh, to come out with, uh, with better books uh, than Pramudya Anantatu's books. That's uh, the first one. And then the, the second question uh, that was asked to him was uh, regarding uh, this time regarding also um, uh, the, the people uh, in PKI, the Party Communist Indonesia, who had condemned Buya Hamka, who had um, been uh, making false accusations against him. Uh, and uh, they asked him, uh, what what was your attitude towards them? And we are said, I have forgiven all of them. I have forgiven all of them. So this is another another uh, part of the same, uh, you know, value of uh, not having uh, vengeance uh, as part of of your character, uh, and uh, and the readiness to forgive, the readiness to forgive. Uh, your worst enemies. That's uh, that's another another trait of Buya Hamka. And um, uh, they said that uh, those people uh, were, were 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 actually destroying his name, his good name uh, as as a good uh, Muslim scholar and as as a good novelist and writer. Uh, and uh, that. Uh, and, and and these accusations led to his uh, to Hamka being being detained. But uh, despite all that, Beliau sudah memaafkan juga. So he has already forgiven those people, even before they ask him. He has forgiven them. Mashallah, this is another great spiritual trait of uh, Abu Hamka. Now, what? Listen to what uh, Taufik says. Hadirin di teater teater arena tim. Terdiam hening, you know the uh, those who uh, attended uh, this talk in this uh, team uh, theater uh, were, were silent, uh, and uh, uh, and they were stunned. Not just silent, stunned uh, uh, and, and and silenced by this mendengar keikhlasan yang terpancar dari ucapan sastrawan dan ulama besar ini. 
uh, hearing the the sincerity uh, and the um, uh, which was reflected from the speech of this uh, great um, literary uh, person and a great alim. And Taufik said, "Banyak yang menitiskan air mata." Many people shed their tears, uh, including this novelist Iwan Simatupang, who was sitting next to Taufik Ismail. So see how people are moved by the spiritual quality, this rare spiritual quality that Buya Hamka has. Uh, if if uh, if he were to be an ordinary kind of uh, religious uh, a scholar, then he probably thought this is after Sukarno has fallen and the new regime, uh, new order came up, that would be the time to really get rid of all those people and uh, take your vengeance, your, your legitimate vengeance uh, against uh, those people who had uh, injured you and trying to destroy your reputation uh, during their ascendancy. Now, uh, another story that, that uh, Taufik mentions here, uh, this is under the story of, uh, this is also related to Pramudia. He said, uh, I heard from uh, Dr. Hudaifa uh, Kudda, who used to uh, treat uh, Pramodia uh, and was very close to the uh, family of this, uh, of this writer, uh, I got the following story. Uh, he said, uh, the daughter of, um, the, the, the eldest daughter of Pramudia Anantator, her name was um, Astuti. Uh, and the, 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 uh, the popular uh, name was Titik. Uh, Astuti fell in love with uh, a Christian man, Daniel Setiawan. Uh, and um, Daniel is a non-Muslim and is of Chinese origin. Now, Pram, uh, Pramudia uh, actually wanted uh, um, um, Udaifa uh, I'm not, not sorry, not uh, wanted this Daniel Setiawan uh, to, to learn Islam, although he was not really, uh, really practicing Islam in, in, the, in the real sense of the word, but he wanted his daughter to be married to a, to a Muslim man uh, and not uh, just, uh, just uh, or Christian. And, um, um, so uh, what did, uh, what did Pramodia recommend or ask uh, this uh, would-be husband of his, uh, of his daughter, Daniel Satyawan? He asked Daniel Satyawan and asked Tuti to go to Buya Hamka and request Buya Hamka to teach uh, Daniel Satyawan Islam. So can you imagine again now Pramodia uh, maybe Pramudia has realized what he has done, uh, you know, uh, to, to Buya Hamka and, and, and realized how, how, uh, how um, uh, profound is the knowledge of Buya Hamka and how, how much he is uh, highly respected in, in Malaysian, in Indonesian society. Uh, and he probably liked the way Buya uh, taught Islam. So he wanted his uh, future son-in-law to study under Buya Hamka. So they all went, and um, so when they reach uh, the house of Buya Hamka, uh, Titik, the daughter, explained the reason uh, and conveyed, uh, "This is uh, I am the daughter of Pramudia Anantatur, and this is my uh, going to be my future husband. And my father uh, wanted you, uh, Buya Hamka, uh, to teach." So Buya just smiled. He smiled and he said, "Baiklah, okay." All right, okay. So then Daniel learned Islam from, um, from uh, Buya Hamka. Now, um, and um, then uh, people ask, uh, people ask uh, Pramudia Anantator why he sent uh, uh, his daughter and the future son-in-law to Buya Hamka when he was the one who really was trying to destroy Buya Hamka. Now, this is what he said. Pertama, 
because uh, karena saya tidak mendidik anak saya, justru ibunya yang mendidik dia menjadi seorang muslimah yang baik. It was uh, the mother, my, my wife who, who taught uh, my daughter to be a good muslimah. Uh, and then I, I have to respect uh, uh, the mother's wish. Um, as for my, uh, my, my political difference with Hamka, masalah perbezaan pendangan politik Hamka tidak berubah. So he still does not agree with, with the Islamic position of Buya Hamka, yet he uh, wanted his son-in-law to study under Buya, which means that he really believed that Buya has really good knowledge of Islam. Then, uh, um, but he said, uh, as far as uh, giving talks about Islam, he said, Buya Hamka lah di Indonesia yang paling mantap berbahas tentang Tauhid. So according to, to Pramudia, Buya Hamka uh, is the most qualified uh, person to, uh, to discuss uh, the subject of Tauhid. So um, yes, uh, belajar Islam ya, belajar Tauhid. So if you want to learn Islam, you have to know what Tauhid is. So you have to go to uh, Buya Hamka. Now, walaupun Pram tidak secara jelas dalam hal ini meminta maaf kepada Buya Hamka terhadap apa yang telah dilakukannya bertahun-tahun dahulu, tetapi dengan kenyataan bahwa Pram, Pramudia menyuruh calon menantunya pergi belajar ke rumah Buya Hamka, bukan kepada ulama lain, saya membaca peristiwa ini sebagai ungkapan minta maaf dari Pramudia Anantatur. This is the Uh, interpretation of Taufik, Dr. Taufik Ismail. He says, although uh, Pramudia did not um, expressly mention that he uh, sought forgiveness from uh, Buya Hamka, but the fact that he sent his, uh, his uh, uh, future son-in-law to study under Hamka, uh, to go to the house of Buya Hamka, uh, could be interpreted as an indirect way of uh, Pramudia expressing his uh, regret for what he has done uh, to Buya Hamka. Uh, and, and this is, he said, uh, Taufik says, this is perhaps the, the indirect way, dengan gaya orang Jawa. Uh, secara tidak langsung, dengan gaya orang Jawa. Uh, so this is the, the indirect way with the, you know, uh, the, the style of Javanese people. Uh, but to me, uh, to me, says uh, Taufik, ini indah sekali. This is so beautiful. Uh, Buya Hamka sebagai seorang sufi menangkap makna getaran ungkapan itu. Buya Hamka as a man of uh, tasawuf uh, could capture the meaning of that um, of the meaning from the vibration of that expression. So uh, now uh, now we come to something very very important. I want all of you to listen to this. Um, Sehari sesudah Buya meninggal, one day after Buya passed away on the 25th of July 1981, that night I had a dream. Who said that? Uh, Dr. Taufik Ismail said that. That night I had a dream. I saw uh, a big car, a, very, a big car, Lincoln Continental. This uh, a huge, uh, long uh, American car, you know, like the Chrysler. This is Lincoln Continental, a big one. Uh, Berkilau-kilau is, is sparkling uh, with a uh, pin to six doors. Uh, and, then, and then it slowly stopped. The car, this Lincoln Continental slowly stopped and the, um, the, uh, the, the door, at the end, uh, at the back, um, on the left side was slowly opened. And from inside, a man came out, uh, strong, uh, with long robe, diperbuat dari emas, made of gold, berkilau-kilau, uh, sparkling uh, golden robe, uh, di bawah cahaya matahari, 
under the sun, under the rays of the sun. I was, I was shocked. I was shocked. The, the man in the golden robe was Buya Hamka. And then he said, he says, Allahu maghfir lahu warhamhu wa'afu anhu um, waj'al waj'al jannatahu uh, mathwahu amin ya rab. This is, this is the ending uh, of the foreword by Dr. Taufik Ismail, our good friend uh, who knew Buya Hamka very well because his father was a close friend of Buya. But this, this, this dream uh, is, is really a remarkable dream because the, the scenario uh, is, is very modern. The scenario is very modern. Uh, Buyad being driven in a Lincoln Continental, in a big Lincoln Continental. If um, the scenario could be, could be uh, presented in, uh, in an Indonesian kind of environment, you know, or Arab environment, or um, uh, Malaysian environment. But this is uh, Lincoln Continental, big Lincoln Continental. It's like uh, American environment. So in other words, Buya has become a global kind of a citizen. Uh, and, and with uh, six doors, meaning that this is uh, the car for very, very special people, the VVIPs. So Buya has become a VVIP uh, and uh, was dressed in a golden robe and was uh, full of uh, sparkles and uh, uh, due to the uh, light of the sun uh, falling upon him and it was Buya Hamka. So try to, maybe those who, who understand ta'abir of, of this uh, dream could actually interpret it in a spiritual way. So to me, I, I'm not uh, an expert in ta'abir of, of, of dreams, but I think that this dream of Taufik, and Taufik is very sincere, good man, uh, shows that Buya Hamka uh, is uh, spiritually elevated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to a very high station uh, in the spiritual world, in the world of uh, Barzakh, uh, just one day after he passed away. So, but this is very, 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 very uh, picturesque uh, scenario. Maybe because Buya is, is a man of literature, a man of art. So the dream uh, was depicted in a very artistic, uh, dramatic uh, manner. Wallahu alam. Anyway, so, uh, but I, with that, uh, it confirms uh, many people's belief that Buya was an exceptionally uh, spiritually elevated person, and uh, we thank Allah for that. Okay, now uh, I, I, I will not refer to this book anymore. Let me go to what I have uh, noted down here. Um, by the way, I'm just uh, making, uh, taking note of the time. I have another another what, half an hour before the end of the session. So I will end uh, 10 minutes before, before the session, meaning that um, I will uh, try to, um, I will try to end by, by uh, 10, 10, 20, inshallah. So we can finish by 10, 30, inshallah. Now, um, uh, regarding the personality of uh, Buya Hamka, from, uh, from what I read uh, from the writings of uh, Bangrushdi, uh, the, the son who wrote about, about Buya Hamka as a, as a uh, Ujanga, uh, Indonesia, um, he, uh, he, he says that um, Buya is, is a very soft-hearted person, soft-hearted person. Uh, he is easily moved by the recitation of the Quran. Uh, he would shed tears on many occasions 
uh, when he reads the Quran, even when he is leading the prayer, when he is doing tahajjud, uh, when he reads certain verses, then he will be he will be weeping, he'll be crying uh, like a baby. Uh, and 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 Rushdi and uh, used to see him in that way. <clears throat> um, Okay, then, uh, then Rushdi mentioned something about, about um, uh, what, um, what President Sukarno uh, had um, intended for him. Remember, uh, last, week, uh, last week, there was a question about, um, about this, um, his, uh, his reaction to Sukarno. Now, uh, here again, um, uh, now I'm reading from from what uh, what uh, Rushdi Bang Rushdi wrote. I remember the occasion when we heard the news of the death of President Sukarno. Uh, Dad, uh, this is um, Rushdi talking. Dad certainly has not forgotten that Sukarno, at the height of his power, hated him most and was vengeful towards him. That speech in the, uh, in the Congress, which um, um, rejected Sukarno's proposal uh, for the merger of uh, nationalism, religion, and communism under NASACOM, uh, must have certainly hurt the feelings of President Sukarno. The presidents once said, uh, regarding his idea of uh, NASACOM, uh, and he says, this is the straight path. This is as-sirat al-mustaqim, said uh, Sukarno. And Buya Hamka replied to him, that is uh, as-sirat ila al-jahim. Yeah? As-sirat ila al-jahim. So meaning this is the path to hell, not the path not the straight path, uh, and then uh, and then we know then um, uh, what uh, um, Rushdie says. Uh, as, as we know, Sukarno then silenced uh, uh, Buya Hamka by imprisonment for almost three years. Now listen to this. But when when Dad heard later that Sukarno was critically ill, Dad cried. Buya menangis mendengar berita yang Sukarno sedang sakit tenat. In fact, he went to lead the, the funeral prayer of the deceased Sukarno. Uh, somebody said that uh, uh, last week uh, that Sukarno did say that uh, before he died, uh, he would like, uh, like uh, Buya Hamka to lead the prayer and, and Buya fulfilled the wish of Sukarno. So one thing, and not, this is another spiritual quality of Buya, uh, Buya Hamka. You know, Sukarno um, did many bad things against him and against many other people, uh, but he never said any bad thing and, uh, against Sukarno. And, and because, you know why? Because during the struggle for independence, during the revolution from 45 until about uh, uh, 49, well, during the four years, uh, Buya Hamka and Mashumi leaders were leading the counter-revolutionary movements against the Dutch. And Sukarno came to Sumatra uh, and met uh, Buya Hamka and the other Mashumi leaders. And they, they, they talked to one another. They, they liked each other very much. They respected. And, and Buya respected him as a nationalist leader, as a man with courage, the man who had the courage to declare independence uh, even though they were not, even though the Japanese were not out yet, but the Japanese have surrendered, but they were still there. And and Buya uh, and, and Sukarno and and uh, and Hatta were, were were persuaded by the young people to to declare independence. Uh, and 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 that was what uh, what Sukarno did in 1945. Uh, and and that was highly appreciated. Everybody appreciated the courage of Sukarno, and Buya would speak highly of that and would forget all those bad things that Sukarno did to him. This is another great quality of an Islamic leader. Um, 
So, and he cried. I mean, if I were in his position, I would have laughed. I would have said, ah, padan muka tu. Ah, padan muka. Ah, you deserve it. But, but dad cried. In fact, he went to lead the funeral prayer of, uh, of the deceased Sukarno. He just ignored the criticism and derision of many people regarding what he did. Because many people in Mashumi and Muhammadiyah said, why do you have to go and lead the prayer of, of Sukarno when he did all those bad things against you, against Mashumi, against Muhammadiyah? But uh, Buya just ignored and put that aside and he went, uh, he went to lead the prayer. And uh, after the death of Sukarno, this is what uh, Bang Rush did. I never heard him, I never heard my father denouncing the life of Sukarno as though he had really forgotten that it was Sukarno who arrested him based on an anti-subversion law, which was well known as pen press no, uh, number uh, sublas. Not only he was magnanimous with Sukarno, but he was also friendly to the end of his life with supporters of Sukarno who were also responsible for putting him in prison. What a wonderful spiritual man. Um, then another, uh, this is a story of, um, about the girl who came. I think I will just, um, I will not read this because uh, it's, it's quite long. It's about how uh, Pramudia sent his daughter and uh, future son-in-law to the house. And it's quite detailed, so I'm not going to read that. Um, but what uh, what Buya says, uh, uh, what what his son said, what what Rushdie said at the end said, um, <clears throat> uh, another case of a fellow Muhammadiyah leader who was a bitter enemy of Hamka, another uh, uh, a Muhammadiyah leader as a was a bitter enemy of Hamka, but later Hamka defended him in court, plus other cases that could be mentioned. These are evidences that dad was really a man who did not know how to be vengeful. Yeah? Buya was a man who just did not know uh, what revenge is all about. So remember, he said his philosophy of life is chinta. Love is the philosophy of life. And this love, of course, is, is a very high value in, in, in tasawwuf. Um, now, uh, okay, now during the time of uh, Suharto's presidency, uh, Buya was highly regarded uh, as a Muslim intelligentsia or as a public intellectual in Indonesia, as well as a leading religious scholar who contributed significantly to the resurgence of Islamic da'wah. Uh, in New Order Indonesia. In fact, uh, Buya Hamka and, uh, and people like Pak Nasir in Mashumi uh, were the people who uh, shaped uh, the, the nature of Islam that uh, uh, would be uh, uh, nurturing uh, the new nation of uh, the Indonesian Republic. Yeah, so that, that's very important. And I think James Rush uh, the uh, biographer of, um, of Buya Hamka. In, this is a great uh, a biography written by American uh, writer, James Rush. And the title is The Great Story of Hamka. Uh, it's worth reading because uh, it's written with great passion, with objectivity, with sensitivity, and, and, um, uh, and revealing many things that many Indonesians might not even know. Um, now, Rushdi describes that his father uh, also used to add elements of humor in his religious uh, judgments and his preachings before the public or on uh, TVRE or, or the uh, TV uh, station of uh, Red uh, TV uh, Indonesia. In other words, uh, humor was, was also part of the uh, means of bringing people 
to appreciate Islam. Uh, and of course, we have many examples like that in Malaysia, uh, and of course, many in Indonesia. Of course, maybe the most famous is uh, uh, Ustaz Abdul Samad, uh, who, uh, who is able to uh, make people laugh while conveying uh, the message of Islam uh, in a very clever way. Uh, so Buya has that uh, skill of, of uh, adding humor uh, in, in his uh, speeches and also in his uh, public preachings. And, and because of that, he has been invited many times uh, by Suharto to deliver lectures at the presidential palace. And although he did not quite agree with Suharto on several things, he would go and he would talk to, uh, uh, to the people there and, uh, and, um, and, and uh, communicated uh, and engaged uh, the, the people who attended uh, his talks at the palace. Uh, I mentioned uh, last time that uh, the, um, uh, the peak of his career came when he was appointed as the first um, chairman of the Indonesian Ulama Council. And um, uh, so they wanted to find somebody who could be acceptable to everybody, you know, because Ulama Council would represent the uh, Muhammadiyah uh, and also Nahdlatul Ulama, the two biggest Islamic NGOs in Indonesia. And then they have other smaller organizations and uh, uh, so Majlis Ulama Indonesia, established by Sukarno, uh, Suharto, uh, they were looking for the appropriate person to become the chairman. And everybody agreed, everybody, uh, there was unanimous decision that Hamka was the right person. Um, then, uh, but, uh, but at that time, before Buya could, could accept, uh, his colleagues in Muhammadiyah uh, and also some people in Mashumi were a little bit uh, cautious, uh, uh, thinking that that Buya might be falling into a, a trap if we were to accept this. Uh, but Buya uh, listened to their uh, concerns, but Buya prayed istikhara. He consulted uh, the senior leaders uh, who actually agreed that Buya should be the chairman. But his own son, Rushdi, Rushdi said in his, in his uh, book that he, he was skeptical. Rushdi was not happy that his father accepted that position because Rushdi was afraid that he would be manipulated by the regime. Um, Okay, this is what Rushdi said uh, from what uh, Buya told him. He says, a political person may desire, may seek the position and the chair because the chair is comfortable. But I personally see the chair as an electric chair, <laughs> electric chair, you know, <laughs> electric chair. If, if we get electrified from sitting on it, we will die. But because our intention, our niyat is good, inshallah, we are not going to be uh, to die from electrocution. You see, so he knows that the chair uh, is not going to be an easy chair. It is a chair given by the, by the regime, by the military regime. But he says, because of the sincerity, this is another very important point. If you work sincerely for the sake of Allah, you are not afraid what human beings can do to you. Because if it is not, if it is not part of Allah's taqdeer, nothing that human beings plan can injure you. And if it is not part of, uh, of uh, Allah's taqdeer, nothing uh, good will come to you. Uh, so uh, a person who has reached that level of spiritual maturity and spiritual depth uh, has no problem uh, assuming that position uh, without uh, being afraid of being manipulated. Now, 
Um, uh, now, in 19, um, sorry, be before, okay, um, now Buya and the MU, MUI passed a, um, a, a fatwa uh, regarding uh, the, um, um, is it, uh, because the question was, was raised at that time, is it possible for Muslims to participate in Christian uh, religious celebrations of Christmas? And the um, Majlis uh, Ulama Indonesia deliberated and uh, Buya as a chairman, uh, I think prevailed with his opinion that it was not all right for Muslims to participate in religious celebrations of Christmas. But uh, this was not part of the fatwa, but he did allow uh, Muslims to wish uh, their uh, Christian friends Merry Christmas. So wishing uh, other people um, you know, good things for their religious, uh, on their religious um, festivals is allowed uh, by Buya Hamka, but participating in a uh, religious uh, ceremony of uh, Christmas was not allowed. Now he was forced to withdraw uh, that fatwa. The army was against it. The, the, uh, the uh, minister for religious affairs was against it. Of course, the president was against it. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, but, but Buya stood his ground. And then he said, well, if you want me to, um, uh, to withdraw, um, I will, I will uh, okay, I can withdraw, but, um, but the, you cannot remove uh, the meaning behind that fatwa. You can remove the text, uh, but the intention still stays. And then he said, uh, um, uh, and he was of course, again, asked to, to, to retract but he said it is better for him to resign rather than to retract and Buya resigned from his position. Uh, that again, uh, it reflects uh, the, the, the high uh, spiritual principle uh, of integrity uh, of a religious leader of high esteem. Uh, and it is for this reason that many people uh, respect it even among those who do not agree with Muhammadiyah or Mashumi, uh, but they, they respected uh, Buya as, as a scholar of integrity, who never um, uh, sold his religion for the sake of worldly uh, goods or worldly pleasures, uh, who never compromised his principles, uh, even after being pressured uh, by the powers that be, by the army and by the uh, elites uh, and also some of the Christian elites were also not happy with his position and they wanted him to retract, but he did not retract because to him participating in the religious uh, celebration, uh, then your, your, your belief in the oneness of God uh, is, uh, has become corrupted. So your Tawheed has become corrupted and uh, he could not um, allow that to happen for himself or for the Muslim masses. So um, I think that is, uh, that is about all that I would like to say for now. And uh, inshallah, in the next uh, class, I will uh, go to the, uh, the sources, yeah, the sources of Hamka's uh, spirituality. Yeah, you have seen already some examples or instances in Hamka's life which reflected the great spiritual uh, quality in the heart of, 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 um, of an alim, of a religious scholar uh, who stood his ground, who maintained his independence, and who also refused to, uh, in fact, Buya re refused to be given a car. <laughs> He would rather drive his own old car. He, he refused to, uh, 
you know, to be driven in an official car. See, so uh, Buya has left behind a great legacy. And I would like the young people, young Muslims and young Indonesians, young Malaysians to follow people of this kind of character, independent, uh, sincere, truthful, uh, honest, humble, uh, living by principle, not influenced by all these, uh, uh, all these pleasures of the world, cannot be corrupted, and uh, you don't mind being, uh, being relief of your position as long as you can maintain your principles. Okay, I'll stop there. Sorry for taking extra time, uh, Brother Shahran. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Thank you, thank you so much, Prof. Uh, you have uh, explained in great detail about uh, three uh, three facets of Buya life, dealing with Pramodia, dealing with Sukarno, dealing with Mui, and all shows the integrity and firmness of our dear uh, Buya. Okay, Prof. The first question from Brother Abdullah Idris. Uh, Sukarno in prison Hamka, but at the end of his life, Sukarno I advised that if I died, ask Hamka to pray for me. Based on the information above, did Sukarno in prison Hamka because of the attack of another party or because he was guilty? Secondly, why have Ulama always been the target of the ruling party from the Sukarno era to the present? Okay. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Brother Abdullah Idris. As for the first question, well, Sukarno um, arrested uh, Buya Hamka and detained Buya Hamka and uh, many other uh, Mashumi uh, leaders, uh, not so much uh, for the personal attacks. Of course, he was very offended when, the, when Buya said, uh, this is the path uh, ilal jahim. You know, this is the path to hell. Because Sukarno said, Nasakom is asirat al mustaqim. And you know, uh, uh, you you people did not have a chance to listen to Sukarno. I was uh, quite young at that time. I used to listen to the speeches uh, of of Sukarno uh, from the radio. I could listen, and I I love to listen to his his uh, his uh, great speeches. Anyway, so um, uh, he was, uh, they were detained, but because, mainly because of the instigations by the Partai Communist Indonesia behind Sukarno. They did not want these people to, uh, to, to be around in society to influence people towards uh, resurgence of Islam. Yeah, they wanted the resurgence of communism, not the resurgence of Islam. So they had to silence uh, these voices of Islam. Okay, that, that is uh, to me the main reason. Um, as that is why Sukarno, before he died, he made the wasiat, please get Buya Hamka uh, to, to lead the prayer. And Buya did it. So that nothing personal against them is it's ideological. And the Communist uh, Party uh, was very much a date against uh, the struggle of Mashumi uh, and also Muhammadiyah uh, for the establishment, uh, especially Mashumi for the establishment of the Islamic State. They wanted a, a communist state or a, a, di a dictatorship. Okay, now, the second question, why is it that ulama are always targeted? Well, first of all, uh, Imam al-Ghazali uh, divides ulama into two. One is uh, ulama al-su uh, or ulama al-sultan. And then you have uh, uh, the good ulama, that is uh, ulama al-Qur'an or sultan al-ulama. And al-Ghazali, you might consider him as a sultan of al-ulama. But there were ulama al-sultan. There were uh, scholars of the government. And scholars of the government in, in Al Ghazali's time were not really uh, working for, uh, for the sake of Allah. They were working for their own material uh, uh, gain and material interest. 
And that is why Al-Ghazali was very, very much against uh, this ulama, and he uh, spoke uh, very harshly in the first page of Ihya Ulumuddin, uh, the book uh, Kitab al read the first page, read the first, uh, first and second pages, how Al-Ghazali condemned those uh, worldly seeking uh, ulama, particularly he called them uh, the, the fuqaha. Uh, they were really seeking uh, worldly gain uh, and not really taking people uh, to al-akhirah or to seek uh, the ridwan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, the good ulama are, are people who cannot be bought by money or by fame or by um, uh, whatever. Because uh, as Buya says, uh, the, the, the true mu'min, uh, he has only the fear of Allah. He is not afraid of anything other than Allah. So ulama are like that. Ulama are the warathatul anbiya. They are the inheritors of the prophet. And so they have to, to, to represent uh, the personality um, and the uswa hasana of the Prophet And so the powers that be, they want to run the country in their own way, according to their own ideology. In the case of, of PKI and Sukarno, based on the socialism and Marxism uh, and nationalism and secularism. Uh, so uh, they are being targeted uh, even in, in, the, uh, in, in the world today. Uh, these people are being targeted because these are the people that the masses listen to. So uh, they do not want the Muslim masses to listen to the independent ulama. They want the masses to listen to their ulama, to the ulama of White House, to the ulama of, 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 uh, of um, you know, of, of, uh, of President of America, who would represent American Islam and not true Islam. So, um, that is, the, that is why um, we, we, we really sympathize with the, with the real ulama, that is uh, Sultan al-ulama, uh, ulama al-Quran, and not ulama al su or ulama of al-Sultan. Thank you Prof. very much. The next one by, uh, from Brother Nuruddin. Prof, if you look at Hamka's life, he lived in two different periods namely the revolutionary period from colonialism to the Sukarno era and the development period, new order. Are there different points of emphasis on Hamka's work in facing these two different eras? For example, did he write many novels during the revolutionary era because he wanted to respond to the existence of Lekra, leftist artist movement under Pramodia who had once perform controversial theater such as Death of God, Matinya Gusti Allah. Did Hamka echo modern Sufism and the new order as a response to developmentalism that negated the spiritual aspect? To what extent did the context of the time of influence Hamka writing style? Did Hamka also talk about the relation relations between Indonesia and Malaysia in the old order due to the influence of communism? This is a uh, Comprehensive PhD exam question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, well, as for the last one, I uh, did. Did Hamka? Did say Hamka anything? also talk about the deteriorating relation between Indonesia and Malaysia in the old order era due to the influence of communism? No, 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 no. Uh, in fact, uh, Buya. In fact, um, Buya has uh, high regard for. Uh, for Malaysia, and Buya did not say anything bad. But um, you know, later, uh, after, after in, in the new order, Buya visited uh, Malaysia several times, and uh, he did make a comment about uh, you know about about somebody in in Johor. Um, but you know, the problem was because there was some conservative uh, ulama in Malaysia who belonged to the you might say the old Kamtua. And Buya is considered kaum muda, so it's difficult for them to accept Buya as one of them. Although they respect Buya as, as a scholar, as a great scholar, especially after he came out with this Tafsir al-Azhar. 
but uh, but because he is he belongs to kaum muda, uh, whereas in Malaysian uh, as religious establishment there were at that time many people from kaum tua, who were very close to the sultan, and so they don't quite like uh, a person like uh, Buya. But otherwise, Buya never said anything bad against Malaysia. But uh, the the communists, uh, um, uh, you know, the communist people um, accused uh, Buya of uh, plotting with Malaysia uh, to bring down uh, Sukarno. Uh, now, the, uh, the question of whether um, um, whether his uh, writings during the development period, uh, because this is during the time of, uh, of um, Suharto, uh, Pak Harto with, uh, with uh, Orde Baru, with New Order. And uh, the emphasis then was pembangunan, as you know, development. And one of the first uh, reactions to this was uh, Nur Khalis Majid's uh, thesis that what we need now is development, not ideology, not ideology. So to, to Nur Khalis, the ideological struggle was over. Now this is a period of, of pembangunan, of development. So we should not be talking about Islamic State, how to rule by the Sharia, uh, that is over now. Pancasila is there, that's it. So we have to move on on the basis of modernisasi. Uh, although Nur Khalis says, yeah, what we want is modernisasi, not westernisasi. Correct. Um, but then he said later on, partai Islam, no, Islam, yes. Uh, then, the, now, Buya was not happy with what uh, Nur Khalis was doing. I interviewed Buya in his house yeah, in, in Kebayuran Baru. I wanted, I, I interviewed Pak Nasir. I interviewed also uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Pak pa Rushdi, uh, sorry, Pak Rashidi, Pak Rashidi. I, I interviewed them uh, to find out how they, how they felt about Pembaharuan Nur Khalis Majid. And they were against it. They were against it. And they were surprised because Nur Khalis was was depicted as uh, Nasser Muda, uh, the new, the young Nasser, uh, you know, springing up in Indonesia. Uh, but uh, uh, he went against Pat Nasser's, uh, you know, ideology of rejecting secularism or secularization. Whereas uh, Nur Khalid said, secularisasi is the way open by Tawheed, you know? So uh, Buya um, uh, must have talked about these things, but Buya did not attack uh, Pembaharuan directly. I think because he also appreciated the contribution of HMI, Ha Am I, in the uh, in the count in the in the Gestapo uh, counter coup against the communists, because uh, Ha Am I uh, played a big role. Of course, PKI uh, Persatuan. Uh, pelajar -pelajar, uh, sorry, uh, uh, PEE, pelajar-pelajar uh, in Islam Indonesia played a big role with uh, with uh, Ham E and Kami. So the, the 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 students and they were led also by Nur Khalis Majid and his his group, his people. So the old people had a great respect also for the young, and that is why Buya does not really openly criticize these people. But when you when you go to when you talk to them like I when I talk to um, I talk to Pak Rashidi he was very very annoyed at what uh, Nur Khalis was doing. He said this is not you know he said he should read about uh, secularism and, and so on. And uh, Pak Rashidi said I, he he knows what is secularism and so on. But how come he agreed to all these things? So Pak Rashidi was very much against. Uh, Pak Rashidi was a scholar. And he did not really like uh, this kind of, of, you might say, deviation uh, from the mainstream Islamic thought, which uh, rejected secularism. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof.
uh, since we see that Dr. Muhammad Nor is around with us. Uh, start. Can you say a few words before we invite Prof. Uh, Kamal for concluding uh, remarks? Yeah, silakan. Please unmute yourself, Dr. Magnol, silakan. You can uh, uh, comment, unmute, you can add, you can subtract. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> we appreciate okay. uh, very much of our <laughs> beloved <laughs> Professor Kamal, this uh, very excellent presentation of Hamka, not only theoretically, but he is living with Hamka, uh, not only of his knowledge, but rather his personality as what is he now. And I think uh, I remember that in 1974, when he came to our first convocation of uh, UKM, University of Bangsa Malaysia, National University of Malaysia, in the Banquet Hall of Parliament Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, uh, he was uh, conferred the doctoral honorary by uh, UKM, University of Bangsa Malaysia, the first university which used Malay as the <coughs> uh, primary uh, language. And he said in that uh, very historical speech, the importance of students to uh, value the meaning of Kibibasan, uh, uh, freedom from the Quranic perspective, and also about the importance of Jiwa Merdeka, the spirit of uh, independence. Uh, he actually meant for uh, students to have their own uh, Islamic identity, uh, to face uh, new challenges, and not to be subdued or subdued by any external forces, but rather to have a very strong personality uh, and identity that can shape uh, their mind and also their heart. So I wonder that uh, we miss opportunity of uh, making a hamka in terms of his thinking uh, when he was alive uh, to come and uh, to serve in local universities, including UKM, uh, to be with us uh, at least for one month or three months in order to inspire our students uh, to learn from him uh, a part of uh, his uh, uh, scholarship in Islam, in particular in Tawheed and also in Sufism and also in Akhlaq. Uh, we can also uh, infuse the uh, spirit of uh, literature from the Islamic point of view, as he reflected in his novels, stories, and so forth. Um, we miss that, uh, except today, Alhamdulillah, we have started to enlighten of his uh, thinking through many seminars uh, initiated by uh, local universities and also uh, NGOs. So I think uh, we will be looking forward to hear uh, five more series from Professor Kamal, inshallah till the end. And I really thank uh, to Professor Kamal of enlightening us uh, globally tonight. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Not only for uh, uh, ASEAN countries, but globally, I hope uh, our brothers in America can uh, be enlightened with this Hamka because many people outside of Malay world do not know Hamka. Uh, right. And now with his uh, uh, Tafsirul Azhar, uh, some of our uh, Arab friends, uh, our brothers, they were very uh, stunned and also surprised to see how come a Malay Indonesian can write a very wonderful uh, Tafsirul Azhar. I used right. to ask Brother uh, Anwar Ibrahim when I visited him in prison, uh, the first uh, uh, detention of him in Sungai Bulu with Ustaz Mokhtar Shafi. Mm -hmm. uh, I said to him, uh, why not you spend your time also a part of your habit in reading uh, so many novels, uh, academic books, why not you, you translate this into English since you have a very good, uh, excellent English. Uh, so he was smiling to me. <laughs> it is a great contribution uh, 
if we can translate from Indonesia into uh, English version of Tafsirul Azhar. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stars. So before we close our session tonight, we invite Prof. Kamal for our concluding remarks. Okay, yeah, Prof. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Mohamed Noor. Uh, yes. It was good that you uh, reminded me about the uh, conferment of uh, UKM, uh, the honorary doctorate to Buya Hamka. So that was the second honorary doctorate. Yes, second honorary doctorate. Yeah, he received his first uh, from yeah. Al Azhar in 1958. Yeah. yeah. Um, and this was his, but I was not around. I was in the U.S. at that time. Yeah, I came you back. You joined us in 1978. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I missed him here, but I knew that um, he was conferred, and I, I like the idea that he was reminding uh, young people about Jiwa Merdeka. Yeah, because uh, this is a theme which runs through many of his writings, uh, even in his novels, because uh, Buya wanted very strong, powerful, independent, uh, but uh, intelligent um, uh, youth who are uh, really uh, having this jiwa merdeka. So, uh, because you need this kind of personalities to build the new Indonesia. Yeah to build a new Indonesia on the basis of Islam. Because he, he realized there was secularism, nationalist, uh, secular nationalism, very powerful force. And then you have the leftist socialism, very powerful force. Uh, and then you have Islam. You also have also the, the Kabatinan pre-Islamic, you know, spirit, uh, mystical forces. So these four forces will try to shape uh, the nature of the new nation called Republic Indonesia. And uh, for him, uh, you need to have strong personalities. By strong, not, not necessarily physically, although Buya was good in Silat. Uh, no. but, yeah, Buya was an exponent of Silat. <laughs> uh, that's why he was, uh, he was appointed as commander of the resistance oh. movement in Sumatra yeah. uh, against, the, against the Dutch. Oh, mashallah. Uh, so we are in the Pandai Silat. So anyway, but but it is a spiritual strength that he was talking about, yes. based on Tawheed. Yes. And his life was molded according to this program. Yes. Okay? Yes. So uh, yes. um, brothers and sisters and uh, uh, brother Fauzan and also brother Shahran, uh, inshallah, by the grace of Allah, uh, in the next class in the next lecture, I am going to discuss the contents of his Fasafa Hidup, and why I consider Buya very important uh, with the word uh, Fasafa Hidup. And then the next one, the fifth one will be on Pandangan Hidup Muslim. And then on the sixth one on Tafsir Al-Azhar and the seventh also Tafsir Al-Azhar and conclusion, inshallah. So thank you very much. Thank and you. I seek your forgiveness if I have done anything or said anything which is not uh, appropriate. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. Uh, we still have questions from Ilhamni, from Adha Abdullah, from Brother Zaki, Juan Omar, Brother Farid Faiz, uh, and Brother Toaba. So, inshallah, we will forward all these questions to Prof uh, Kamal. He will maybe highlight it in the next class uh, if it's relevant to the next topic, inshallah. Thank you so much, Prof. Thank you, Ustad. No, uh, yeah. We'll meet everyone again next week. Right. Inshallah, the same mean. time, same day. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Again. Ya Allah. Tadi, kaitan mari tadi. Kaitan merah. Saya pun lupa nak bagi tahu. Okay, so sign.
Oke, okay. dan tanya satu lagi. Baik, entah kepada Profesor Asya. Buku ayah, Syari tak jumpa. 